the Penang people, in your opinion, are being decimated right now? And I think it's cultural genocide. Um, you know, you could qualify genocide uh, by saying it's passive genocide. That is, they're not being physically slaughtered. But the uh, um, infant mortality rate here in Ratanakiri is uh, higher than anywhere else in Cambodia. Why is that? Uh, the Penang can't study uh, in school in their own language, so they're being forced. I mean, it's forced assimilation, which is another form of genocide. Uh, their land is being taken from them, although it's protected by law under the Constitution and the land law, but it's still being taken from them and sold to uh, foreign enterprises for uh, mining or uh, rubber plantations or whatever. Uh, the forest and the trees are being cut down and taken out to Vietnam. Um, when the people lose their land, they also don't get the jobs that, for example, in the rubber plantation, there are jobs uh, for people who work on the rubber plantation, but the jobs go to Khmer, who are brought in from outside the province. Uh, people who have worked on rubber plantations in uh, Kampong Cham and also, uh, so the people don't even get jobs on the land that's been taken from them. So there is, a, of course, I don't know if I should say of course. There is, in fact, an increase in uh, alcoholism and uh, domestic violence. But we would say that's related. <laughs> it's cause and effect. Whereas the, the rubber plantation people say, we can't hire these people because they're lazy and drunk. Well, they're sitting at home drinking because they've lost all hope. Yeah, you made them lazy and drunk. You'd say yeah. to them, created the conditions. You made, you, yeah, right. good for you. You made them that way, so you opted. You, so they right. had to. So the younger uh, Penong are uh, are becoming uh, Khmericized, either by choice or just by by force. You know? I mean, they go to school in Khmer, so they learn to speak, read, and write Khmer, and uh, they see the way forward is to uh, to cooperate with the. Uh, the reality as it is, uh, rather than to uh, protest, and the older people are just uh, have just lost out. How many are there? We think about thirty thousand uh, Penang in Mandalkiri. And is it primarily Mandalkiri or also Ratanakiri? Primarily Mandalkiri, uh, and on the other side of the border in Vietnam. But the the ethnic groups in Ratanakiri are Tampu and Chirai and others. What is the name of this mountain range? And this is their home, is this basic mountain range? Um, I don't know. Uh, Nam Lir Mountain is the sacred mountain of the Penang on the border with uh, Vietnam. Um, that's an interesting question, I don't know. It's the uh, uh, protected uh, biodiversity area called the uh, Sima. Uh -huh. See my biodiversity area, rather than the name of the mountain range. Uh, are there, as decimated as they are, are there places you can go where the traditional practices are still being practiced? Yes, um, among older people in villages even near town, and if you get into more remote villages, then more people would follow traditional uh, values. All those. Uh, a friend of mine who's an anthropologist uh, says that he's not aware of anywhere in Mandalkiri where they uh, follow the, the strict uh, traditional practices uh, of a century ago. For example, uh, he doesn't think uh, there's anybody practicing uh, Benong religion anymore. And I, you know, when I ask the young people some question about uh, Benong uh, beliefs or uh, religion, they don't know, they say they'll ask some older person. Well, the older people are dying. Uh, you know, I've got uh, pictures in my computer of the uh, Penang elders that I've taken in the last few years, and those people are dead. So, uh, when I came five years ago, somebody uh, said that they thought the Penang would cease to exist as an identifiable, cohesive uh, uh, ethnic group 
uh, in 10 years, and somebody else said five years. Well, it's an exaggeration, but we're, we're very close to the end. Um, if, I, uh, if I look at the people that I know in the villages uh, who are, are elders, who are familiar with the, uh, the traditions, and uh, uh, know the complete language, don't speak any Khmer, it's very few, and they're, they're very uh, old. They'll be gone in the next uh, few years. Even here in the shop, um, we work with weavers, and um, I was interested in the looms that they use, and I asked for the banal word for loom, and none of the kids who work here knew. We had to find a, an actual weaver who knew what the word was. So they, they would all they speak to each other in banal, but they use a lot of loan words uh, from uh, Khmer, and even English and French and Vietnamese now. Where would you go? Where would you say the, the, the core, the last vestiges are now? Well, I know uh, Phnom elders uh, in villages nearby, in Putai, that's on your map, and in Dak Dam, and in Busra. Uh, and I understand up around Konyak, uh, on the way up to Ratanakiri, there are some more traditional villages, by the way. Do they live deeper into the forest where we don't even know? Yeah. Have you been? No. Do you want to go? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. But I've, I've talked to uh, people who've gone into those uh, areas. And what do they report? That there are more people living by more nearly traditional uh, ways. Uh, but also, you have the full infiltration of, uh, of motorbikes and cell phones. Uh, so when people get... Uh, not that motorbikes and cell phones are a bad thing, but uh, when you get those, uh, then the traditions begin to break down. Are there villages where there's no electricity? Oh, of course. We just got electricity here three years ago. Wow. So d villages very close to here don't have electricity. And are they still hunting mostly? Uh, yeah, hunters and hunters and gatherers. Um, um, some hunting, I don't think a great deal, but there is some. Uh, we just got that uh, crossbow the other day, and uh, there are adult hunters who still hunt with crossbows. Their belief system, I'm told, involves some really intense and unusual practices of sustainability. Um, they only take what they need. They uh, they practice rotational agriculture as yeah. a prime example. Um, but yeah, I think they, they try to take what they need and they try to recycle the ecosystem around them. And that, that's breaking down now. They don't dare uh, move away from the land that they're farming right now or it'll be taken. Uh, so just a few years ago, they would have farmed uh, one area for a few years and then moved to another area for a few years and then a third area and then back to the original. They don't do that anymore. Because they're going to lose everything if they do that. Right. They're taking the, the government is taking advantage of the very qualities that make them great. That's right. That's the irony and, of the And the destruction of the, of the destruction of the forest, of course. Because uh, they don't destroy it the this way. Is, and the Phnom got everything from the forest. Uh, medicinal herbs and food and uh, um, wild... Uh, hunted wildlife in the jungle, uh, got building materials from the jungle, and now uh, that, that's lost. How would you, if you wanted to go on a three or four day thing to try to find some of the most indigenous, would you have a translator? Would you be able yeah. to manifest? Yeah, we could provide uh, a translator. Bye-bye. Uh, he's in the field right now, but uh, he knows his way around. I think uh, he'd probably want to take you up around Cognac. Uh, or there's some other places where you can go deeper, you know, off the uh, off the track. You could walk. You how know. long would you? How long would you give a thing like that? Um, well, I'd want to talk with him, but I think it, you'd want to have several days. Okay. To do it. I've got that. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in cap. You know, I can. I can certainly record a lot. Mm -hmm. I've got two cameras, mm -hmm. a lot of batteries, a lot of way to 
capture media in the field without needing to recharge. Yeah. So I could get, I would love to be able to bring something that would touch people. I hear what you say about where we're at and I'm not pretending to do anything meaningful whatsoever. And yet, here I am and so I'm going to do what I yeah. possibly can. Yeah, I think uh, it could be a very uh, interesting and, uh, you know, if you're recording, it could be useful in, in uh, saving what's being lost very quickly. Then. Well, the medicinal stuff and the yeah. forest and just being able to do some plant identification. Right. Just being able to say this herb does this and this, if we could find anybody who does herbalism, mm -hmm. that would be the main interest. Mm -hmm. The hunting and preserving and witnessing anything cultural or seeing any of their songs or dances or anything like yeah. that would be incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's certainly doable. All right. And uh, we can help you with that. Our, our two best guides are in the field right now, and they'll be back on Saturday. Okay, so beautiful. So here's, here's my story. I'm, tomorrow is the 30th. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for just an overnight. So I'll be back the night of the 31st. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to invite you to, I don't know what you're doing on New Year's, but if you wanted to come to Nature Lodge on New Year's, <laughs> here's a, yeah, we'll here's see, a I'll, I'll be working here and I've yeah. got a, a guest, uh, a volunteer coming in on Sunday, so I'll be tied up with that. But appreciate what is, the offer. And Christiane too, if you wanna pass that, I'll, I'll pass it along to her, but if I don't see her. She's the woman from Belgium. Okay. Blonde, tall. Right. Working. Katria, we call Katria. her. Katria. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, she. Okay. And, and then, and then the next day or the day after, I would go with whoever. I guess I get on the back of their bike. Yeah. And we'd go wherever we'd go. Mm -hmm. And we'd give it three or four days. Yeah. You just uh, you can talk with the guy when he comes back and uh, work out a plan. Uh, I think he'll be delighted. He loves to do that sort of thing, and he knows his way around. What is he? What is he? What should I give him a day? Um, I I won't say because it he'll have to factor in food and gas. Yeah, and food and gas and so forth. Um, but it would be quite reasonable. Um, other professional guides around town charge sixty dollars a day. I don't think he would charge anything close to that. No, I would rather him, <laughs> for both reasons. Yeah. I'd rather put the money where. He, yeah, well. He, and he is a Penang, so he speaks Penang and Khmer and English quite well. What's his name? Uh, Bunli. Bunli. I'm Lawrence. Mm -hmm. You're Bill. Bill. We're here. Yeah. All right. Well, that would be a meaningful thing to do. You would you have any interest in going? I I would, but I can't get away you, right you're, now. You're here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll bring you back video and I'll copy yeah. it for you. Good. I'll give you everything I got. Good. That's easy. And um, we'll see what the what the herbs are. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see what they what how you know he'll understand the goal. Yeah. Uh, we have a book that's just been published uh, about the Penang herbal medicine, so you can look through that. Okay. I'd love to. And do you have a website? We have a Facebook page. We have a website, but it's just pictures. It's not kept up to date. The Facebook page is kept up. Okay, well, I'll check that out, and then I'll also put stuff up on Axel.Asia. Mm -hmm. This, you know, this talk, and mm -hmm. um, people can just see, you know. All we can do is yeah. spread the word, yeah. or all I can do. You can do a lot more. Yeah, this, the, the thing about genocide, as I said, passive genocide or cultural genocide, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's tricky because it's being done by well-intentioned people, as I suppose it was in the American West and in the Australian outback. In the, I've actually discussed it with uh, people involved in the rubber plantations, and, and they say, without recognizing how idiotic it sounds, they're saying that they're, they're going to bring civilization to the Penal. That's their, their mission, their goal, is to bring civilization to these savage people. And, uh, and I've also discussed it with uh, 
Cambodian government officials who say the same thing. You know, we're, we're bringing development to the Phnom people. In a few years, they'll be able to live in proper houses and watch television and have motorbikes, and uh, you know, they'll they'll love it. It'll be a wonderful life. I said, well, did anybody ever discuss that with them? Is this what they want to do with their lives? Uh, are there any downsides to that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't, don't understand the question. It's it's really sad.